In preparation for reviewing John Mackin's paper, as I promised earlier, um, we're going to do a quick review of the Ohm particle model, which leads to a unified model of the universe. And of course, as you know, I use the yin-yang symbol as the schematic for the Ohm particle model. And this is very similar to John Mackin's model, where he depicts his particles as a rotating, um, as a rotating or an orbiting circular wave with a hill and a valley. And so, um, and this is a spinning model as he depicts here, but um, the yin yang model depicts the spin in a different manner. And so the reason I like John's model so much is because he gave me another piece of the puzzle, another clue as to um, the meaning of this schematic here. And so for a while, I didn't know what these dots were. Okay, so at first I thought that they were, uh, these were charges that were spinning about a central point. And technically this is still true, <clears throat> but in John's model, uh, he's got a, um, a hill and a valley. And in my model now, I can see that this is a hill. This goes from low to high. If dark is low and white is high, this goes from low to high. And this goes from high to low. And so this is a hill and this is a valley, analogous to what John is showing here in his model. And so the Ohm particle model is in fact a quantifiable model. Okay, and the way I quantify it is as follows. The circumference of the circle, the outer edge of the circle, the distance a point travels in one cycle is the Compton wavelength of the particle. The radius, of course, is circumference over 2 pi. Um, but more interesting, the distance between these two points, between the, uh, the peak and the valley is uh, also the circumference over 2 pi or the Compton wavelength divided by 2 pi. And I refer to this as D. Okay, I don't refer to it as R as is commonly done, commonly done in the mainstream language. I refer to the distance between these two points as D. So technically, I don't need the radius. I don't need the radius, but I do need the frequency. And so the frequency of spin of this particle is the speed of light divided by the Compton wavelength. Now, the reason I can justify using the circumference of the model as the Compton wavelength or as a wavelength is because of the relationship between the circle and uh, the wave. And so as you can see, uh, once around or halfway around the circle is half a wave and the other halfway around the circle is the other half the wavelength. And so once around the circle, one complete turn around the circle is equivalent to one wave length. So in John Mackin's model, he refers to this as a wave. This is a wave that is propagating in place instead of propagating in space. So it is propagating in, in uh, one location. And so um, this is a wave. This is not a vortex, although you could consider it as a vortex. It is spinning like a vortex, but this is in fact a wave that is propagating in place. And so this is why we can make the wave analogy with this model. So next, I'm going to show you the three equations that are associated with this model. We've got the mass equation. So mass is equal to H over C squared times the Compton frequency of the particle. And uh, you can see the uh, units uh, over here, which eventually uh, end up being the uh, kilogram. And so next I've got the momentum equation. The momentum equation is um, uh, Planck's constant over C over the speed of light times the Compton frequency. 
And if you work out the unit, units, you will see that this works out to the units of momentum. So this would be the um, momentum of the particle, the momentum associated with the particle. And finally, we have the famous energy equation, E equals Planck's constant times the Compton frequency of the uh, wave particle. And uh, if you, you know, do work out the units, you see that they work out to the units of the joule. So here are the three equations together. We've got the mass equation, which uses H over C squared. And I refer to this as the quantum of mass. We've got the momentum equation, which uses H over C. And I refer to this as the quantum of momentum. And uh, we've got the energy equation, which is uh, Planck's constant times the frequency. And I refer to this as the quantum of energy. And so if this was an electron, if this was an electron, we would plug in the uh, electron Compton frequency into this equation, and we would get the, this exact number here, the mass of the electron. If we plug in the Compton of frequency to the momentum equation, we get a value, this exact value here, which in the NIST standard, uh, is referred to as the natural unit of momentum. But this, in fact, is the natural unit of momentum of the electron. And, of course, if you plug in the Compton frequency of the electron into this equation, we get the electron energy equivalent of the particle known as the electron. Next, we're going to talk about Planck natural units. Okay, so um, Planck considered only the units based on the univer universal constants, gravitational constant, Planck's constant, and the speed of light. And he also used the Boltzmann constant to arrive at natural units for length, time, mass, and temperature. His definitions differ from the modern ones by a factor of the square root of 2 pi, because the modern definitions use h bar rather than h. And so this is where um, John's language differs from my language because I use h in all my equations and he prefers to use h bar. And so when you use h bar in the calculations for uh, calculating Planck natural units, you get these values here. Okay, so this would be for Planck length. This would be for Planck mass, and this would be for Planck time. But when I use H instead of H bar in these calculations, as Planck did back in the day, uh, you get different values. Okay, so you get uh, slightly different values that are out by a factor of uh, square root of uh, 2 pi. And so I prefer to use H instead of H bar in these calculations. And in the Ohm particle model, the Planck length corresponds to the outer circumference, which is the Compton wavelength of the Ohm particle model. Planck mass uh, corresponds to the mass of this particle uh, that is spinning at a certain frequency. And Planck time is the time for a point on the outer edge here to, um, to propagate uh, one complete cycle. And of course, the inverse of Planck time is going to be the uh, Compton frequency of this particle. So as you will see when I review John Mackin's paper, when I uh, review his model, you will see that the that my parameters don't match the parameters for his model. Uh, I believe he uses Planck length. He uses the reduced Planck length as the radius of his model, and I use the non-reduced Planck length as the um, Planck as the circumference of the model or the Compton wavelength. And so I'm going to leave it at there. I'm going to leave it at there. I just wanted to do, do one more video before I do an official review of his paper. 
and uh, then we'll see what we can do to coordinate uh, John's language with my language. So I hope you're having a good day and uh, I'll be back.